going on you guys it's your boy white album here welcome back to some more suki Hime, a piece of blue glass moon last time we left off uh we were just we patched up arcoid and basically we just made a plan to see how we will fight blob okay see if we could take down the big bad vampire of soya city um i'll be honest with you i'm deciding whether or not i want to keep my or i want to turn on my my light or not nah we're not going to i feel like i feel like i need the i need the um the atmosphere like a, a nice dark atmosphere when i play some type moon games but here we go let's get into it let's get into it shall we oh shit oh okay i was not expecting you to... all right here we go we are inside the park ready to uh ambush vlog let's see if we can bait him out ambush him get a quick kill Doubt's gonna work, but you know, here we go. <clears throat> Arcwade and I, or Arcwade and I, have arrived at the park a little past 9 p.m. I'll go over this one more time since it's important. That apostles who have lived for a long time are able to wield eminence arts. What does that mean? Hold on. We're good. You can think of it as a curse unique to the vampire, one gained from consuming blood. This curse of theirs transcends the powers of ordinary vampires. Eminence arts. Interesting. So I'm guessing that's like Vlav's ability to manipulate fire and ice. That would make sense, right? We haven't seen him yet, but that's like a certain vampire who can wield lightning. But uh, again, we haven't seen him yet, but we will. Needless to say, Vlav is a vampire that reach, that's reached that level. Defeating him means overcoming his eminence art at the same time. As a human, you won't stand a chance against his flames unless I extinguish them first. Until I do, that's vital that you stay away from him. Our plan is simple. First, Arkway will lead him here. She told me that the vampires can set another one's location unless they make an effort to conceal their biological wavelength or something. What? Okay. Apparently, Vlav isn't hiding his wavelength at all. Though Arkwade wasn't sure if this was because he doesn't want to be, or because he can't. Luckily for us, that means she knows exactly when Vlav approaches us, and where from. Normally, Arkwade would hide her wavelength, but right now, she's letting it go free, broadcasting her whereabouts and issuing a challenge to Vlav. <laughs> Trying to draw him out like a moth to a flame. And with a bit of luck, the moth will fly straight into our proverbial zapper. Then all we have to do is follow through with the plan. I observe, I'll observe the battlefield from my hiding spot in the bushes. While Arkwade binds Val, uh, Val, <laughs> Vlav with her chains. Then, at the signal, I'll jump out and cut through his lines. Arkwade doesn't look nervous at all. If anything, she seems a little bored as her gaze lingers over, over empty space. I wish I could be that calm. I grip my knife tight in my pocket. It's a bit nerve-wracking. There are a lot of uncertainties in this plan. For one, it hinges on Vlav not noticing me while I hide. Arkway told me that the chances of him noticing me were extremely low, but that doesn't mean they were non-existent. If he does notice me, I'll be done for. I'll be burned alive without any recourse. Just like how he did so many within the hospital. The hospital. God damn it. Within the hotel. <laughs> Even so, I'm fine with those odds. I'd agree to this plan knowing full well the risk involved. There was just one more major variable. What if Arkwade can't bind Val? I said it again. Vlav. In other words, what if Vlav manages to beat Arkwade? I had to deal with him by myself. It'll come down to me and a single knife to defeat Vlav and save Arkwade. Can I even do such a thing? Can I face those flames alone? Just the thought of it makes me tremble. I tighten my grip on the knife, 
coiling my fingers around the handle so hard it hurts. An implacable fear wells within me. I can't even pin down what I'm afraid of. Are you scared, Shiki? I was like, yeah, fucking course of course I'm scared. <laughs> you have the power to fight him. Uh, I kind of fucked that one up. Um, And even then, at your power level, you could still fucking do shit. I can't. I, all I got is a knife. <laughs> Before I realize it, Arcway is standing right in front of me. How pathetic. My quivering must have gotten pretty bad if she noticed. Ah, <laughs> Insanely so. Just imagine that vampire coming for us is freaking me out. Huh. But you don't look like it. Yeah. And it's taking all I've got to keep it that way, stupid. She's so bad at reading the mood. I wish she just had the slightest clue of what I'm feeling. Why is she the one who's looking hurt? Arcway purses her lips, seemingly dissatisfied with my answer. I'm a vampire too, you know. Yeah? You've told me a million times already. Exactly. So why aren't you afraid of me? Because that's not how the script goes. Based on your idea of vampires, you should despise us. Eh? What? I'm a little taken aback by her sudden remark. She's not entirely wrong, but... You're an exception. You never drunk blood, so you're fine in my book. Vampire or not, as long as you don't lay a hand on humans, I've got no problem with you. Hmm. Well, I guess that's one way to think about it. I guess I'd have convinced her. Uh, it's like Arkway's previous hangups slid her off. Uh, what? It's like Arkway's previous hangups slid off her like water off a duck's back. That's an analogy, but sure. <laughs> That's an analogy. All right. First of all, two days that we haven't gone back to the mansion, bro. Shiki is done for. <laughs> I know I keep repeating myself like a broken record, but it's just like dog. Okay. You are not giving your sister the best impression of yourself if this is like, what, te technically still your first week back at the mansion and you've already fucked up the first time around? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, Shiki. The hands on the clock indicate it's now past, or it's now 10 p.m. According to Arkawade, this is when vampires start to get active. He's likely coming above ground now. I don't know where he's holed up, but he'll notice Arkawade's presence as soon as he wakes and likely make a beeline for the park. Is he insane? Arkaway's demeanor shifts. Her words drip like con uh, contempt as she turns away from me, peering north towards the station. Arkaway? What is he doing? Is this guy really an ancestor? I follow her gaze over the horizon. Oh, there's a fire breaking out over there. Is that... smoke? Thick black smoke curls upwards into the night sky. There must be a fire downtown... Wait. A fire? Arcoade. Is that what I think it is? It's Flav. He's attacking people downtown. Saying is insane might be a little too generous on my part. This guy is no better than some of the lower ranks. 
He is a beast that draws blood from people around him to replenish his strength. He has no concept of what laws govern this modern age, let alone civilized society. The sound of a faraway explosion rings through the air. The smoke surges into the air with newfound intensity. This is bad. If he's moving through the downtown area, then this will be a whole other scale from the hotel. The numbers of victims alone would be at least in the thousands. Arcoid. I know. We better hurry, Shiki. We run for the station. Just what the hell is going on over there? Shit. Shit's going down, that's what's happening? <laughs> Shit's going down, man, come on. Oof, that's how I feel after eating Chinese food, bro. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Like, I love Chinese food, but... I don't know, as I get older, man, it's just, it's just like, ugh, that shit just doesn't sit with me any well anymore. He awakes in agonizing pain. His screams pierce the air. There was a loud grinding noise, like a piece of metal getting caught in a blender. His cries are horrific, otherworldly. So horrific, they make even his minions tremble. He writhes and flails and lashes about, but none of his uh, protests has numbed the pain enveloping his entire being. The skin, is of, uh, the, skin, uh, <clears throat> the skin of his fingertips splits and cracks. Acid oozes from within his bones, melting and gnawing at his body from the inside out. His heart shrivels and corrodes from the necrosis, only to regenerate once again, forcing him to prolong his own suffering. An unending cycle of torture, doomed to last as long as he lives. His long escape would have been death. But even that salvation was stolen from him long ago. Well, hey, you got there's one man for the job, buddy. Okay, I have like one headphone on, so that's like in the one ear that he's doing that in, so it's a, it's, it's a little uncomfort. It's a little uncomfortable here. <laughs> he doesn't remember why he abandoned death. He doesn't remember when it was that death became such a distant concept. All he knows is suffering. Cold, pain, heat, fear. His mind is filled with nothing but animalistic screams. He knows that he came to this land to pursuit of, in pursuit of something. To kill something. He left the women he loved behind and crossed the turbulent waters uh, from Melty Blood. From what I learned, this man has like 11 wives apparently, which is insane. Or 10. It's just, that's insane, bro. My man is a player. <laughs> This is his last chance. Wait, so are they vampires as well? I just realized that. <laughs> does he have does he have like ten vampire wives, bro? Bob is a player, dog. He's a player. <laughs> this is his last chance. He's prepared to reclaim it all, leaving himself no hope for a return journey. The only question is how much remains for him to recover. Day by day, sanity is stripped from his mind. Day by day, their curse consumes his body. Was this fate bestowed him as punishment for crimes committed in some distant past? Not even he remembers. He's already forgotten so many things. Whatever it is, he, uh, whatever he yearns to take back, his sanity is no longer on the table. Sanity was lost to him long ago. Sanity can never be found again. His wealth and assets, too, were lost when he traversed the oceans, and now there was no way for him to return to his homeland. The only way for him to survive is to turn this foreign land into a second domain. Yet his past, his future, they matter not. At this moment in time, he craves but one thing, blood. What if it just sounded like McDonald's? That'd be <laughs> that'd be insane. It's like what? It's like damn, you're hungry, but that's the one thing you want. Hey man, sometimes a Big Mac just hits, you know. Uh, his throat is freezing, his skin is parched, his soul hungers. He needs warm blood as soon as possible. He desires to bathe in it as soon as possible. Questions like where he is or what he's doing pale in the face of such uh, fervent longings. He walks through the darkness. Zombies obediently fall in line behind him, 
marching silently along. The metal box carries him to the surface, where he creeps outside into the brightly lit streets. An elevator? <laughs> that very instant. Azure flames spill out, flooding the area around him like a ripple on a lake. The, fumi the, uh, what? the humans in the vicinity have no way of sensing the impending danger. Shrouded by a blue haze, he mindlessly steps out onto the crosswalk, ignoring the blinking traffic lights and the van that threatens to crash into him. Meanwhile, his ghoul sees innocent passerbys left and right, grabbing them by their shoulders and taking them to the ground. A plethora of horrific noises follow, the crunching of bone, the devouring of flesh. And though the people scream and cry, none of them flee. By the time they realize this terrible reality has, fallen, uh, has befallen them, they have no recourse. The van collides with the strange man, but at the moment of impact, it splits down the center. Oh, I didn't know if Vlad was built like that, okay. In less than a minute, those caught by the ghouls are reduced to pitiful scraps of flesh. Flames fan out through the area, scorching the legs of those trying to escape until they are little more than charred stumps. Their wriggling torsos remain behind as fodder for the ghouls to feed on. Hell's pandemonium, given life on Earth. Why? In the middle of the pandemonium, the man regains a glimmer of reason. He squints at the dazzling lights around him. Though his thoughts are still drenched in his own pain, the sight stirs disgust within him, providing a brief moment of clarity. Why must this town be so glaring? Filth is something one ought to conceal. Is it the custom of this land to bear it to the world? Before him is a vast cornucopia of humans. Normally, he would have feasted and drank until his gut was brimming with rich, warm blood, but the urge to do so does not strike him now. How can this land be called fertile if humans inhabiting it have tainted it so? Humans abound. I shall not want for blood. The Azure flames surround the living dead. They engulf the ghouls, changing their very being and rewriting their composition. They become a type of undead fueled by flame. In exchange for their swollen strength, their lives will quickly burn out like candles. Yet, hold on. <clears throat> Yet, I seek not the blood of these pigs. This physiological disgust, or psychological, disgust only amplifies his curse. Blue flames spill from his being, rushing across the asphalt like a river bursting free from its dam. There, it finds and claws and devours all living things. Damn, okay, shit. This ain't your father's type moon, I can tell you that for a fact. <laughs> In the end, it is all meaningless. The seared human fruits burst and spew their warm juices as he tramples over their flesh. He accepts their offering with head bent in distaste, an act tantamount to, uh, to being showered in vomit. What other choice does he have? Look at how fucking long his fucking teeth are. That's insane. I guess that's when they go into like full hunger mode, like feed mode. Their canines just... Is that their canines, right? Just straight up just in, in long gate like that? If he were not bathed in this disgrace, his body would not move. This light, this prosperity, all of him is meaningless to me. The burning zombies fall back into line behind him like a, a ghastly parade. He does not remember what, uh, what he was chasing, 
but until he remembers, there's only one for thing for him to do. A much in his service that he is to provide. He sneers, thinking of how these humans ought to suffer and die. Yes, this bloated den of humanity deserves a wretched end. A wretched end. The town is in chaos. People crowd the streets as they push and pull to escape the mayhem. The fire in front of the station is visible from here. An emergency broadcast plays on the large digital displays on the sides of the buildings. A fire is broken out of the north exit of Suya Station. All trains heading in and out of Suya have been temporarily suspended. People in the downtown area are currently running for their lives. The broadcast switches over to a news presenter interviewing a young girl. She's wearing a high school uniform. It seems she's only just managed to slip away from the fire. It's so hot. It's so, so hot. Why is it so hot? Those things, they ate Yuka. They, they even bit my arm. Well, you're, you're done for. Kept moving even though they were dead and they were burning but they wouldn't stop smiling her voice is panicked driven delirious by the dire situation the virus spread the, the what the fire spreads relentlessly and the entire neighborhood has been urged to evacuate but even with those orders in place the main street is full of people they gather and draw together spurned by curiosity from a distance they watch the fire unfold filming and sending messages to update their friends and family The road to the station has already been blocked off. Fire prevention, perhaps. No. It's too soon for that. There's too, too many people in the area to be blocking it off like this. It's almost like they're trying to keep whatever is inside from escaping. Damn it. We aren't gonna get through we aren't getting through this way. Shiki, over here. Arkway seizes my hand. Without another word, she tugs me along, guiding me through the mass of onlookers drawn by the fire. The fucking alleyway, again. <laughs> Whoa, hey there, slow down. Why do we come here? She lets go of my hand. Arkaway slowly scans the wall of the nearest building. <laughs> okay, this'll work. Didn't I just call this last time that I said they're going to end up at the fucking alleyway? God damn it, dude. This game. I love this game so far, but it's been very predictable in its moments, man. I will I will say that. I mean, you could say that's a good thing or a bad thing. I just think it's hilarious. <laughs> All right. It's my first time jumping with another person, but I should be able to manage this height no problem. Oh, she's about to Superman jump that shit? Uh, huh? Arkaway doesn't hesitate for a second. She grabs my arms as if to secure me. We're jumping. Hold on, Shiki. Right there is where he shit himself. <laughs> he fucking shit himself, dog. We're flying. No, we're jumping. Arkaway leaped against the wall, bouncing off of it and onto the next, multiple times until we found ourselves soaring above the rooftops and high across the skies. With me in tow, of course. We're so high up. I'm gonna lose it. How high are we even? We're above the buildings. So this is what, 40 meters? Higher? A 20 meter high, uh, high roller coaster is enough to give me a heart attack, and this has got to double, uh, got to be double than that. All my, with, all with my feet dangling o uh, over open space. Yeah, I don't think this is good for the heart. Shaky, if you don't stop screaming, you'll bite your tongue. <laughs> Again, she doesn't realize that this is not normal for humans. <laughs> Arkaway tilts her head at me as I scream. 
But having said that, her movements only grow more turbulent. She jumps from, the, uh, from building to building, bouncing off the rooftops like she were a rabbit hopping around the moon. My expression tightens as my body is subject, uh, subjected to forces unimaginable. But just as I'm beginning to enjoy the experience, we come to a full stop. He's sitting there, he's just fucking crying. He's like, oh, he's like, oh my god. Never, ever do that again. <laughs> We're atop a tall building that provides us a panorama of the city. A rooftop garden concealed from unwanted eyes. Yet here we stand. Yeah. Would you mind giving me a little heads up next time? The abrupt up and down movement has me heaving to catch my breath. My chest hurts. I'm sure the blood pressure spike was bad for my heart. And even though there was no change in air pressure, my whole body is rigid from coming such a, an abrupt halt. It's like I've got the bends. Look. Over there. <laughs> Look at what... I don't manage to finish the thought. For a moment, I forget. I even forget about my racing heart. It's all on fire. Our city. This place I've known so well. Its familiar buildings are awash in a sea of flame. What? My eyes adjust to the sight, and I see the tragedy play out in full view. The main street is veiled in hues of red as the fire colors the town. The flames whittle away the surface of the buildings like a knife. An unholy river of flames, with that man at the center of it, basking in the rain of blood as he sates himself. Dude, he's like standing there, loud and proud. <laughs> there are silhouettes spread out in front of him. Police officers have him surrounded on all sides to stop his onslaught. The muzzles of their pistol flash as they all fire on cue. What? Blob doesn't even flinch in the slightest. He likely hasn't noticed the police pre the police's presence. More silhouettes step off from the flames behind the monstrous man. The flaming zombies. Some of them may have been alive mere moments ago. But now, they're little more than shambling corpses. They approach the police officers, as if begging for their help. And we're just watching this? <laughs> what the? What the hell just happened? Utter disbelief coats my voice. It's too late to turn back now. All the urgent bravado I had for this mission was bleached away by the sight of the town. The only thing left is pure horror. So this is a vampire's true power. A power that enables him to kill people just by existing. And we're supposed to defeat him? <laughs> Looks like the church hasn't shown up yet. Such an ostentatious display should draw them out by now. I guess that means they really didn't dispatch anyone to this country. That said, they closed down traffic fairly quickly. Maybe there's an is it execute executor. I don't know why. That's like, it's, like, it's like weird, but I'm pretty sure they say that, uh, yeah. An execute around. <laughs> Just not one of their warriors. Arcoid focus, or Arcoid's focus lies somewhere else, away from the river of flames. She seems, uh, she seems to be on guard for something else. Well, Shigi, what do you want to do now? As you can see, Vlav isn't of sound mind right now. He isn't even trying to find me anymore. The only thing on his mind is slaughter. 
If we just leave him be, he'll burn through his reserves and grow weak. Knowing Flav, he'll probably burn down the entire city before that happens. But but, uh, but after he's done, he'll be weak enough for me to defeat uh, to defeat him by myself. <laughs> you want to take it easy? To sit back and watch till our chances arrive, or... I know what she's saying. Do you want to brave the danger to save these lives? She must already know my answer, but she's still checking my resolve one last time. A chill crawls down my back, but I stare back with such willpower as I can muster. <sighs> Got it. Our objective remains changed, unchanged then. <laughs> well, if seeing all this doesn't change your mind, you might as well be as insane as love. But what should we do now? I guess I don't mind starting right away, you know. Starting? Is she saying she can change the location of battle? <laughs> you could do something about this? Yeah, hopefully. It's not like I want to be out here in plain view either. Then please, get him out of there. Got it. I'll take him down below. There's some kind of cavern beneath these roads anyway. Take him below? A cavern? What is she talking about? Never mind. This isn't the time to be asking questions. We've got to get him away from here as fast as we can. But remember what we promised. You're gonna come in after me, okay? And before my mind has time to catch up with, she, with all she said, Arkawi jumps. He's like, that's cool, I can't do that. So he's gotta take the long ass stairs around. <laughs> Unless he does some like cool shit and he like cuts the lines of the building, he just rides down the slope. Or something like that. He won't, but that'd be sick. She abandons me, she abandons me on the roof and leaps into the void. Oh god, please don't be another OST, because I got a copyright claim on that. Uh, what? Oh. There she floats, like a beautiful pale flower caught in the breeze. A flurry of air catches her body as she falls from the rooftop, unfettered from the chains of gravity, unanchored by nature's laws. Instead of falling, she rises gently, like a ship in the wind. She sails across the night sky. I can't even be surprised. She's like an infant carnation of the planet. Every fluctuation that plays across its surface belongs to her. All of nature's blessings. All of its fury. That's which nurtures life, and that which destroys it. Both are hers to wield, to embody. All right, here we go. The beautiful flower swivers her body, her body away from the moon. Her attention shifts from the skies to the ground. It is time for her unbound chains. What? Yeah. It is time for her unbound chains and coiled up anchors to slam into the ground. Below her is the concrete castle, spewing sparks of flame. All right, ready, set. The flower that bloomed in the night sky transforms into a falling star. The moon lily becomes a tempest to blow away the con the confer I know this word. Conflagration. That just means fire. She's a human missile. 
He must have fallen from the height of some 80 meters in the sky to hit Flav. No, not fallen. It was calculated. She launched herself right at him. After adjusting her trajectory in midair, she accelerates towards her target like with mythil mythil <laughs> with missile like precision. There she is dragging that man. <laughs> Dirt and debris erupts in a cloud around the impact site. The massive storm of dust sweeps the area. Even the ever expanding river of fire is snuffed down in one fell swoop. The police officers that have surrounded Vlog are, f are sent flying backwards by the blast. Most of them are instantly put out of commission. Those who weren't who weren't knocked out are, are too overcome by fear to mount any sorts of resistance. A perfectly natural response. <laughs> holy shit. That, that's not a holy crap moment, she. That's a holy shit moment. <laughs> the dust settles, unveiling the scene below. Or what's left of it anyway. Arcoid's attack doesn't just take out Vlav. She plunged into the earth and shattered through the, its surface, taking a section of the station's north exit and a good chunk of the shopping district down with her. So this is what she meant when she when she said she'd take him down. The crater has got to be at least 40 meters deep. It feels like I'm witnessing some spectacle of nature on par with the Amazon rainforest or Niagara Falls. <laughs> Hasn't that idiot ever heard of restraint? Of course, this isn't praise. <laughs> Still, this is incredible. Did she plan all this, or, or did it, or did it just happen to go well? From my vantage point on the rooftop, I don't spot any casualties. Well, that's because they're already dead, big dog. <laughs> Police officers outside the blast zone came rushing in to tend their unconscious brethren. Then they set out to withdraw from the area. As a result, the vicinity is completely cleared of human life. There's one hell of a force to be reckoned with. Was that Vlob's fire? Maybe Arkowitz missed her target, or Vlob managed to dodge just in time. Either way, he's still alive. What a monster, surviving a blast like that. I think you should get your ass down there, man. You're, you're kind of wasting time here. But something is chasing him down within the flames. A burst of white flashes from within the cloud of dust, pushing him, uh, pushing back against him. You're going to come in after me, okay? Arkway's words echo in my ear. There'll be time to think later. For now, I've got to get down from here. Yep, there it is. <laughs> I make it for the stairs. I cut through the lock with the door with my knife. Well, that's one way to get through things, right? To do that with a wall real quick, man. I hurtle down the stairs by the glow of the emergency lights. My resolve and my breathing are both rendered wild and ragged as I speed downwards. All I have to do is sever Vlov's lines. First, Arkwood will fight him and bind him with her chains. Then it'll be my turn. I'll run up to him, cut his lines, and chop him to pieces. What Arkwood just did right now, or just did now, was truly amazing. It's no wonder she insisted she could restrain him. That said, even so, Vlob is still alive and well. There's a chance that Arkwood underestimated him, probably. And if she did, her wounds just put her at a disadvantage. Worst case scenario, I'll have to face I'll have to face Blob alone. No, that won't happen. We didn't plan for the worst because there was never any any need to. Because if Arkawi were defeated, there'd be no option for me to but for me but to, for me but to run away. At last, I make it to the make it to an elevator. I throw myself inside and slam the button for the first floor. There's no more time for doubts. Even if there was. I'm in way too deep to voice them. If I try to take a deep breath and check over my uh, and check over myself, good. It's only one piece. Body still moving. The only parts I feel stiff are my fingers. They're gripped so tightly around my knife that they don't even feel like they're part of my own body. Is this fear I'm feeling? Am I scared of facing that monster? That incarnation of violence? 
If that is all, then I'm fine. At least this proves I'm still in my right mind. This is a creature that can just kill by being in close proximity to someone. Any human ought to be afraid of that. But that leaves one other fear. The real problem. Namely. I'm more afraid of killing than being killed. My breathing quickens. My heart thumps faster in my chest, like it's trying to break out, break free from my body. I arrive at the first floor. Adjusting my grip on the knife, I run as fast as I can towards the crater. I step out of the building and witness the mountain of rubble before me. Slowly, I inch closer to the crater, stopping just short of where the ground caved in to peer over the edge. It's definitely 40 meters deep. There was a park here once, but there's no trace of it now. The debris is scattered across the sl uh, slope, all the way down to where it bottoms out into the cavern. It looks like it'll be too steep to climb back up, though I should be able to get down there safely, uh, safely enough. Which is why I... Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> Really? The one time you give me a... Ugh, fuck. Okay, it's one of these. I I don't know if this changes anything, specifically, but... Well, actually, okay, let, we're going to scope things out first. That's what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to scope things out first, because let's see what happens. I can't go down there now. The pit below is filled with azure flames as far as the eye can see. In the middle of it all stands the towering vampire. Vlav Archangel. It appears that the explosion didn't even scratch him. What a monster. By human standards, he might as well be immortal. Well, technically. Technically, he is. <laughs> but even so. Even so, the figure in white still dances circles around him. Like a beautiful huntress darting and weaving through an orchid of flame and crumbling rubble. That figure in white is Arkoid. She leaps over the river of flames to close in on Vlav. In his hand is some crude weapon. At a glance, it looks like a long sword, but his blade is shaped like a machete. Arkoid, on the other hand, is fighting a back against him with her bare hands. She only got her legs to run and her clawed hands to strike. Yet even so, this proves enough to counter Vlob's machete. He, uh, he's forced backwards another one uh, after one tremendous blow. The wound left on his arm is deep enough for me to see the bone beneath. But the sight lasts only a mere moment. By the moment Arkway slashes open Vlob's flesh, his blood is already flowing over it, repairing the gash. Arkway had warned me about this. Vampires won't die as long as their supply of blood isn't exhausted. It's just like she said. A wound fatal to any ordinary creature disappeared in the blink of an eye like it was never there. He swings his heavy blade without fear. Arkwood is careful not to overextend. Whenever she lands a blow, she quickly leaves back just out of his blade's reach. She must be wearing him landing a counter-strike. No, that's not it. Her face says it all. She's enjoying the chase. <laughs> Is resilience to death the only thing you've got going for you? <laughs> oh, how the 27 ancestors have fallen. Do you plan to die before you show me your trump card? Vlav's breathing comes out in ragged heaves. His morbidly pale skin is painted with anguish. He may be immortal, but there's a limit to his powers. Even though he appears to be unharmed, Arkwave's dive bomb must have wrecked him, maybe even dealt an otherwise fatal blow. And in regenerating his entire body, he burnt through most of his energy. 
Arkwood's in a similar situation due to me killing her. But that sort of but that sort of thing must have taken its toll on Vlov too. I take it she's thinking the same thing. So she's distancing herself after each attack. Essentially baiting Vlov to move in for the kill, hoping he'll risk it all on a full blow uh, counterattack. The metallic ring, the, the metallic ringing of blows reverberates through the air. Vlov's breathing is a mess. No, this is an awful forbid, uh, foreboding chill creeps up my back. Arkway's got the upper hand, and Vlov is clearly getting exhausted. So why am I feeling so uneasy watching all of this unfold? It's as, well, it's as if Arkway's claws are no longer hitting him like they were like they were before. Worse, despite Vlov's ragged appearance, his sword play, no, machete play, is still not is still top notch. It's as if he can see right through Arkwood's actions, anticipating and calculating for every move. But worse of it all, he still hasn't used that flaming claw of his yet. Well, you better put them choppers away. There it is. Vlov howls. The fire shudders and soars in response. Swirling several meters high, the flames grow into an inferno that towers over the both of them. Then, they, split, uh, they then split into countless blazing branches. The underground coliseum has morphed into a jungle of flame. Walls of fire pass around Arcoade, blocking off her escape routes. At that moment. High above her, melting straight through the rubble, hands. Composed of heat stretched their fingers wide before slamming straight into her body. In that one second, the tides shift in Vlaw's favor. Arkaway told me that she could withstand temperatures up to 10,000, 10, 3,000 degrees. But these flames just burn straight through the concrete. They gotta be far, harder, uh, far, far, far hotter than that. Vlob stacked three of those fiery hands atop one of another. A strike like that wouldn't leave ashes behind. She never had a chance to escape, and now the fire, only, the fire only serves to lap up its prey. That's how it ends for the woman in white, and so incinerated without a trace. That is, if this had happened last night. Oh shit. Okay. Cool. Awesome. She's got like a new form. It's like common rider, dude. She got her, uh, she got her mid-season upgrade. <laughs> uh, the flames part. A white skirt flutters in the wind. My gaze is glued to the scene, mesmerized by her transformation. She told me all about it. When the fuck was this? Oh, I've got a plan. I'll remake my body before. Oh yeah, she did say that. This black and white battle dress must have must be the cum, uh, cum, accumulation of her plan, a piece of armor that can withstand the heat of Vlav's flames. I wonder if it looks that way because it absorbs its flames, or if Arkway made it that way. Either way, the flames have no effect on her now. He's like, where the fuck did she get the heels from, dog? <laughs> she did like a fucking full Sailor Moon transformation without us seeing it. Her plan went off without a hitch. Arkway's victory was all but assured once she figured out that fire was, uh, was Vlav's main weapon of attack back in the hotel. Vlav assails her with more fiery claws, but Arkway bats them away with a casual flick of her left wrist. As Isla is parting her hair, she cleaves through the wall of flame, a flame scattering them left and right. The sparks that managed to touch her white dress sizzled and fade into submission. Her golden hair streaks behind her like a shooting star. The way she moves and swings her claws now is unlike anything I've seen her do so far. Vlov is forced to stumble back, helpless against her onslaught. The difference between them is astounding. It's hardly even a contest anymore. Vlov went from hunter to hunted, the second his flames were rendered useless. Arkway is absolutely relentless, inflicting fatal wound after fatal wound as she corners the vampire. The only reason Vlov's still standing must be because he's still got some blood in reserve. 
but that will run out sooner or later, especially since there's no one left in the area for him to feed off of. All that's left is... All that's left is that what? That which already flows within his body. Just a few more hits like this, and that'll be gone too. He'll be starved. And once he no longer possesses the fuel he needs to regenerate, he'll be little more than a regular corpse. <laughs> this. A plea for mercy. Undignified, like a like a spoiled child. Gone is his skillful display with the machete. His swings turn wild and graceless as he hap hap haphazardly lunges at Arkawid. Almost like he were trying to cast away his fears, but she doesn't miss her chance to retaliate. It's cold. So cold. So very, very cold. The vampire cries as he leaps into the air. Getting away from Arkaway takes every last ounce of blood fuel power that he has. He flees, soaring higher and higher, aiming past the confines of the, of the crater. Even a 40 meter deep crater is enough to keep him trapped. It's not like that he intends to scur the surface for more blood to retain, replenish the supply. What the fuck? Did she just create leaves and shit? Oh, she did. That's insane. Okay, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Those aren't chains, but they'll do. But Ivy wraps around his legs before he has a chance to escape. It sprouts from the earth in a flash, tangling itself around the vampire with incredible force, and drags him back, right back into the crater of the center of the hole. Damn. Toss that man like a fucking sack of nickels. The river of fire at lost feet is reignited. I watch as the azure flames turn the ivy to ashes. But it's not enough to release him of his shackles. New vines spring forth from the, this topsoil of ashes. No matter how many times he burns through them, the chains remain unbroken, reviving again and again like a phoenix. Even the immortality of a vampire pales in comparison to the nature's infinite cycle of rebirth. These vines are that cycle made manifest, sort of burning down the entire planet. There's no way to escape them. No amount of vampiric powers or curses can extinguish nature's breath. Arcoid dashes in this direction. Everything about her posture and demeanor tells me that she's going for the final blow. She's already crushed every last one of his attacks. Finally, she decides to put an end to this. I'm happy to let her do it, do uh, do the honors. She doesn't even need my involvement. Any moment now, Arcoid will crush Vov. There's just one thing. Even with our victory so close at hand, my heart beats like crazy. Something feels wrong. His agony, his labored breath. Something tells me that things aren't as they seem. The anguish painted on a sw uh, sa uh, shallow fake Sallow? Is it sallow or shallow? It's clearer than ever. In this incandescence, he alone inhabits a different world. A white breath, so out of place amidst the fiery sea that envelopes him. I know that look in his eyes. It's one of obsession and one of self-preservation. He is both the aggressor and the victim. Which is when I realize that we made a huge mistake. Damn it. What am I thinking at a time like this? Arcoid's victory is already guaranteed. I'd be an idiot to try and interfere now. I ought to stay here and observe. There's no need for me to plunge into that hellscape. Knowing that, I... No, we gotta... We gotta if something ain't right, you gotta call that shit out, so we're gonna call it to Arkawin. I remember what Arkawin told me. Defeating a vampire means defeating whatever special abil abilities they possess. The problem is... That, the, problem, what? the problem is that we were looking at the wrong ability. In focusing on the fire, we overlook something else. But that's not where his true power lies. Arcoid! We were wrong! It's the other way around! I shout out to her from high above. 
but I'm too far. My voice won't reach her. Despite it all, I scream with all my might. I know what type of vampire- what type of vampire? I know what type of power this vampire wields. It's not heat, but... Arcoid pierces his chest. Blood spurts out from the wound. It flows quick and free, like a, like a bottle uncorked. At last, this scorching nightmare is brought to an end. Blob is pushed past the final threshold. A terrified or terrible sound fills the air. It rends time and space as the vampire reveals its true form. The atmosphere crackles and sparks. The atoms that were accelerated by the heat suddenly deaccelerate at an unnatural pace. Electrons bounce off the ultra cold matter and with nowhere to go, reacts with the atmosphere. The blue flames that cover the ground around him were never really flames at all. They were an exothermic reaction akin to vaporization. The very earth rapidly losing heat. Hunter. He's just like... See it? <laughs> Hits her in the face. This world is... He extends one of his cold-blooded arms. His fingers spread wide, palm open, as if craving warmth. So very, very cold. The beautiful Huntress is enveloped by blinding light. Huh? It wasn't just the temperature that dropped. The world itself underwent a drastic change. A torrent of ice blows Arcway away and engulfs the city beyond. Everything is frozen, from the ground in the pit below to the roofs of the skyscrapers. All in a flash. I wonder if anyone was left in those buildings, not anymore. If there were people who still hadn't been evacuated, then the sheer cold would have robbed them of their heat and killed them in an instant. A shiver runs down my back at the sight before me. I'm afraid to think of what might follow this. It's stupid luck that I'm even alive right now. Had I been behind Arcwood on the other side of the crater, I would have been frozen alive. The river of flames could cover a wide area, but it also spread slowly. Most people would be able to outrun those flames if needed, but this river of frost is something else. It might have been a narrow, uh, it might have a narrow range and followed the set path across the ground, but once it's fired, it spells instant death. If he manages to escape above ground, he'll slaughter the whole town. Arcoid. Damn it. Is she okay? I desperately cling to the hope that she's still alive. She's the only one who can stop this monster. Well, you too, buddy. There. I spot her in the middle of the Glacier River. Thank God for Arcoid being tough as nails. It looks like that blast of ice didn't even dent her. I see how it is now. It's not that you're insane. You're just fleeing from your sanity. I suppose even a third rate dead apostle can topper their superiors if they possess the right principle. Thanks for the wake up call, Vlav Archangel. Ar Archangel? Kirk Angle? <laughs> Arcaway stands untouched at the center of the glacier. Vlav's gaze is as cold as ice that surrounds is as cold as the ice that surrounds him. His eyes are no longer filled with the same pain and agony as before. They're the eyes of a hunter now, stalking his prey on the snowy tundra. <laughs> I am the one who was awoken. How dare you rob me of this much heat? The hatred on his tongue cuts the air like a knife. He hasn't lost the will to fight. If anything, this is the first time I've actually seen him this motivated in battle. So, あなたを救ったのは憎たらしい殺人鬼よ。ま、
それも今一時の話だけど Count yourself lucky, Vlov. Normally, I'd finish you off before you came to your senses. Thank a certain slasher for making me too weak to bring you salvation quickly. Though, that's but a temporary matter. What if they just became friends? Like, just right here, right now? That's where the that's where this fucking story ends. They just became friends. <laughs> I mean, that'd be a crazy twist. That would be like an insane twist. It's like, they're fighting, and he's just like, you know what? I'm done. Uh, you know you know where to find me. <laughs> I see. I understand now. Your power is indeed a far cry from what I heard you can muster. How fortunate am I, am I to face you now, weakened as you are? Though I hate to admit it, you're right. Both of us are on our last legs. The next move will end with uh, one of us being wiped from this earth. So before we get to that, I'll show you the least bit of courtesy. Damn, she hit the uh she hit the uh the jolter eyes. <laughs> Answer me, lowly servant. Mark of the ancestor, lesion on the root. Whirling hollow. Bastard seed of a newborn principle. That sounds like a fucking Bring Me the Horizon song so far. <laughs> what is blood to you? Arkaway sounds oddly dire, even considering the situation. Her question sounds like one condemning him. Even Vlav looks like he was taken by surprise. You shall have your answer. To me, blood is warmth itself. It is the warmth of life, that which heals my frostbite and guides both my world and my principle. Without blood, I would succumb to the cold and find my demise at his icy grip. His tone belies an honest reverence as he clarifies his true nature. He's like, I'm, I'm just cold as fuck, dog. He's like, bro, hey, get yourself a heated blanket, bro. You be good. That's all I got to say. Just get yourself a heated blanket. You be fine. <laughs> I remember now. There was once an eccentric, va or, yeah, eccentric vampire who both loathed and feared humans. To avoid them, she traversed the distant seas and built a castle of her own. One of the 27 ancestors, Zarya Offenbaum, I heard that she never sired any children. Despite having used her principle to rule over her domain for more than a millennium. In which case, I suppose you killed her and robbed her of it. Correct. I am no successor, but I am a knight. No. I was once a knight. Eternity was never meant for my grasp. Why did I thought that was his fucking leg that he just, <laughs> he just kicked up there? The vampire beckons towards his shadow with his right hand. Oh shit, he summoned the fucking big boy sword. Out of his unnatural stretch umbra emerges a strange and massive weapon. 
後藤氏にとってもそれはより不相応だった。But such a thing was unsuited for my master. ゆえに奪った。騎士として王を倒し、その王座を散奪した。今やこの原理は俺だけのものになった。Thus, I took it for my own. I became a knight who usurped his liege and stole her throne. Now her principle is mine alone. Okay, so she shared like the same thing with him. Was it the fire or like the fire and ice type thing? The, that would make sense, right? That would be kind of cool. So, it'll be a short reign then. Bold words, princess. You're too weak to manifest your marble phantasm, yet you still dare to challenge me. I don't need it, nor do I need to assimilate with nature to take out a simple dead apostle. For someone like you, just my claws will do the trick. The corner of his lips curve into a smile. His gallant features twist into that of a hideous beast. It's a wry smile, as if to confirm Arkawa's accusation. The strongest beings are those who are balanced yet ever changing. Beings like you, even in your weakened state, still exceed my own power. A primordial creature that can weather any storm and withstand any curse. A regular dead apostle will not possess a sliver of hope against you. But he's like, I ain't like most dead apostles. <laughs> The air distorts. His twisted desires spur the blue haze to lower the temperature even further. But Arkaway doesn't hesitate. She's fully aware that a direct hit from Vlob's strange lance could be the end of her, yet she still charges head on. Then. But you know nothing of me. My domain may be part of this planet, but it's not one fit for life. Who ancestor, princess, or not? Let us see how you fare against this hell of mine. Oh, did he just hit a Bankai? <laughs> a, flur a flurry of ice, of ice cold gust spread outward from Vlav. Arkwood comes to an abrupt halt and throws her hands up in front of her as to protect herself. The wind screeches as it blankets the surroundings and temperatures approaching absolute zero. And then, well, and then we have to figure out what happens next because we're going for quite a bit now, so. We'll see what happens in the conclusion of this fight, you guys. So, if you guys did enjoy today's video, like, comment, and subscribe. It is your boy, White Album. I will see you guys next time.